risk is an inherent part of business. So let's embrace it. How do we manage it? How do you identify the risks and how do you manage them effectively? And this is a very, very key and very dangerous concept in business because with risk, you can't just sweep it under the carpet. When you're working with risk and when you're working with uncertainty in business and with people, you need to be able to work very closely with the finance department, within the risk department, and very, very closely within the strategy department. Now, strategy within the organization is all about where you're going and what are you going to do in order to achieve your long-term objectives in order to create value for your shareholders, who are the rightful owners of the business. Now, what are you going to do to achieve that? And what are the risks in that long-term objective? Because your strategy is not a three-week concept. It's not a one-year concept. It's a five to 10-year view on how you're going to get to the end goal. Now, what we're going to be doing now is looking at our different strategies in order to achieve those long-term goals. And then by doing that, we're going to analyze the risks and the journey in order to get to our end goal. The whole view that we're going to be looking at and the way strategy unfolds is either through organic means or through acquisitive means. And organic means, and what we're going to be doing here is either expanding our underlying client base, and we can do that by launching new products, by horizontal integration and expanding our existing product offering, or through going down and integrating with our suppliers, integrating with our customers, working coherently with them, and by launching new generation of our products or new versions of our existing products in order to then create and supply our customers with their underlying desires and needs. Keeping your customer happy is all what a business is about, right? We can also then look at the acquisitive growth strategies, and this is where we're going to go out and buy businesses. We might be buying a division, supplementing a gap in our organizational structure. We might be buying routes to market. We might be buying a customer base. We might be integrating and investing in a new market abroad. We might be completely restructuring our organization. We might be going somewhere new, somewhere exciting. Right? The market's moving away from us, so let's get on board and change our whole strategy. But in order to do that, we need money. We need money to make money. We have to invest today to drive future growth in order to achieve our long-term objectives within the organization. With investing today, that means money's going out. We're gonna be getting money back in, hopefully in the future. But with that comes risk. And how are we gonna analyze it? How are we going to manage it? Now, investment decision-making forms part of your capital budget. Your capital budget, you're investing in non-current assets, you're investing in bricks and mortar and, and people and infrastructure and relationships and trust, right? And once you lose your trust of your customers, gone. You're never gonna get them back. So let's create this trust, let's launch these new products, but let's do it properly. And we can only do it properly if we identify the risks and we manage those risks effectively. Now when we have this capital available that we're going to invest and it's all part of our capital budget and going forward how are we going to decide what it is that we're going to do you know we've got so many different things we can do within our organization well first of all we can do this through environmental scanning we can look at what's happening we can use pest analysis porter's five forces swat analysis porter's diamond we can use all these theories to uncover opportunities within our organization. Or we decide that there's an issue within our business that we need to address relatively quickly that's going to need an element of capital investment. And through that mechanism, we can then say, right, what we're going to do, we're going to change from a labor intensive operation to maybe a mechanized operation. And therefore we need to invest in production lines, we need to invest in the people, we need to invest in the processes and skill sets. But what this all entails is money going out today upfront time zero now money's going out the door but what that'll benefit the organization is that money will come back in in the future because money's coming back in in the future we have to incorporate this concept of time value of money and all that says is that a pound today is not going to be worth the same in the future so we got to now accept the fact that money is going to shrink so we're saying that money in the future needs to be discounted at a certain amount or percentage 
to get the present value of that cash inflow today. So at time zero, in a relatively simplistic form, is that we're going to have money going out, and then money's going to come back in the future, but the money coming in in the future is not going to be worth what it is today. So hence, we're going to discount that. And with all that money coming in in the future, there are risks associated with it. What do we know about the future? Well, not really very much, do we? Maybe a year, two years out, we might have a very good understanding. We know what the government's doing. We know what our customers and our suppliers are doing. But what about five years time? What about 10 years time? Well, we might not be too sure about what's going on then. So there's risk. How do we identify the risks? How do we manage those risks in light of our current market environment and our anticipated future market environment? And this is where we use risk and uncertainty. And ultimately, the difference between risk and uncertainty, risk is based on experience, uncertainty we've never come across before. So with the financial crisis, business had never experienced that. With COVID and all the influences and all the economic turmoil that has been uncovered, we don't know what the future holds. Brexit? Oh, crumbs, that's never been experienced before. So we have to take contingencies into consideration. We have to make plans. We've got to be able to be on the front foot, but we need money in order to be flexible. And that's where we're going to use our capital to embrace opportunities, but also to use it as a defensive mechanism. All these different risks are influencing our business. What's happening to our customers? What's happening to our suppliers? What's happening with political pressure and policy? What's happening with banks? What's happening with your competitors? What are they doing? You need to analyze these risks, plot them out, identify the worst risks and be proactive. Problems are only going to exacerbate themselves and they are going to cause the demise of your organization in the long term. So let's manage them. How do we manage them? Well, what we need to do is implement mitigation strategies. We've plotted all our risks, we've identified the outliers, and we're going to try and bring them down to within an acceptable rounds within our propensity of risk. We've all got different propensities for risk. Some enjoy risk, some don't. So it depends on the business, depends on you, and depends on management. So let's get it done. How do we do that? Well, we implement mitigation strategies. We can implement hedging strategies. We can take out insurances. You can have offset, especially if you're operating abroad and you can't export and you're struggling to import. Then you're worrying about exchange rate fluctuations and everything else that are going on. Well, we can offset, right? You get your customers and your suppliers to pay each other rather than coming through you and you potentially using our foreign exchange. What you can do is work with your bankers, work with local politicians, work with local business groups in order to manage these risks. You're not alone. You will never be alone in business. Speak and manage and be proactive and engage and you'll be absolutely fine. You can also look at quantitative methods, which is great because then what you can do is use computerization, you can use new world technologies to help you manage these risks and identify the financial impact of these risks. But again, that's only half the story. You've got to have your ear to the ground and you have to implement management methodologies. When you're looking at all your different types of risk and let's say you're in the oil industry, you can't just discount your future cash flows looking at one discount rate. You have to identify the risks and the ability of the organization to manage the different risks of each different project and different projects will have different risks and hence they'll have different discount rates because the more the risk, you would expect the higher the reward to be, right? to offset those risks. So we're gonna be quite careful and we have to take that into consideration when we're looking at our discount rates. And that's where we'll introduce, when you come to the university, and we'll introduce you to this whole idea of beta risks of the organization against individual project risks and how you can manage those. To sum up, we've got risk and uncertainty in business, but that's fine, let's manage it, let's embrace it, but let's be proactive, okay? Because we need to compete, we need to win, and we need to work with other organizations and people within our company. Always, always have an exit strategy. Always have a contingency just sitting here behind you that you know that you've got something to go to if there's a problem. We've always got to get out of jail free card. Be clever, be savvy, have some form of insurance, have some form of mitigation strategy. 
when you implement the projects and you've now completed the project or the projects ongoing always do this reflection audit or a post completion audit to see what you did well to see what you did badly so now you can learn for the future we're all going to make mistakes in life and in business i promise you no one's perfect but you've got to be prepared to learn from your mistakes so therefore you don't make them in the future we're all going to perceive risks differently that's absolutely fine we need to analyze these risks and we need to put in effective risk management strategies. Just putting your fingers in your ears before this thing explodes or sweeping risks under the carpet and hoping it's gonna go away, it's not gonna work. You need to be proactive, you need to be enthusiastic, and the better you'll be able to lead your organization and achieve your long-term objectives. It's been great to meet you. Look forward to welcoming you to Bath into our lecture theaters. Bye-bye. <laughs>